series is shonen, shoujo, fantasy, or magical girl, your characters will likely have some sort of magical abilities or powers in order to help them in the journey of your story. However, designing unique powers and helping them be entertaining to your readers is something that can be pretty difficult. With so many other entertaining powers, abilities, and transformations out there, how do you create a power or ability that really stands out from the crowd? In today's video, I'm going to be giving you all of the tips you need to know in order to design unique and interesting abilities, powers, and transformations for your own characters in your own manga, comic, or light novels. I hope you enjoy this video and it helps you with your creative project. about powers and abilities, I feel like it's also really important to talk about transformations. Usually these kind of go hand in hand and sometimes certain powers or abilities can be accessed through a character being able to transform. Now not every character needs a transformation. For example, if you had a witch or a wizard character, they may have powers already in their character type so they may, they may not need to transform in order to access their powers. So here are some tips on how to decide if you actually need to have a transformation for your story. So the first reason why your character may need a transformation is that if your character has to be in a certain physical state to use their powers. In the case of Madoka Magica, if they didn't transform, their human bodies would be in danger. The soul gem protects them when they transform. Now the second reason why your character may need a transformation is that if your character's powers or weaponry are too bulky to carry in normal circumstances. In a lot of cases, a magical girl will have a weapon to use in battle. Transforming allows that weapon to appear in that process and it means that a character wouldn't have to carry around a bulky weapon in physical ways. My third reason why your character may need a transformation is if your character's powers are too strong in regular form. They may need to unlock their powers in a way and get into a state where they can physically handle those powers. If none of these points matter for your own character's abilities, then you don't need to include a transformation in your story. However, if these tips do apply to you and you want to create a transformation sequence in your own story, here is how you can do that. My first tip is give them a good reason to need to transform. I recommend you look at the previous tips I mentioned and try and think of a good reason as to why it is so important for them to be able to transform in your story. If you just have a flashy transformation for no real reason, it can make the story you have developed seem less entertaining. But if you give a reason behind your character's need to transform, it can really add a lot more depth to the story you have created. You might want to look over previous reasons to add a transformation and find ways to apply them in your own story. My second tip is give a theme behind the transformations. For example, Sailor Moon are based off planets, the abilities in Avatar are based off elements, and in Tokyo Mew, the abilities are based off animals. I recommend you try and be really unique with this because choosing the right options in this will help you stand out among other series. Some examples of themes for transformations could be plants, so characters' abilities could be based off a type of plant, flower, or herb. Objects. Characters' abilities could be based off certain items like kitchen items, furniture, or even machines. Colors. So characters' abilities could be based off different colors. Or crystals. Characters' abilities could be based off different crystals. There are so many examples I could give, but I recommend you really consider ideas you could come up with on your own to make your story really unique and stand out from others. Just consider these different possibilities and ways you could give a theme for your character's transformation. My third tip is focus on the main parts of the transformation. The transformation should actually happen in a matter of seconds, even if you're going to show it in slow motion. And that is the case for most anime transformations. It's something that would usually happen in a blink of an eye, but when they actually show it to the viewer, it's something that's shown in slower motion. So you really want to make sure that your transformation is kept short and to the point and doesn't add too much filler or excess details that are unnecessary. So for your own transformations, you need to decide what the main aspects of the transformation are, what needs to be gained, and try and think of a way to show them in as simple and as quick of a way as possible. So in order to do this, focus on the main aspects of the transformation. So what is added or changed from how they looked before? In most cases, this might be the clothes, hair, or weapons. Those are the three main parts of a usual transformation. If you wanted the transformation to be as short as possible, even just showing those three main aspects would be enough to tell the reader exactly what is happening. 
main aspects in focus, even if it's kept short and to the point, it will still make sense to the people reading it and viewing it. My fourth tip is decide on the origin of the power. As they transform, that power for the transformation will come from a certain power source. So this might be from a particular amulet, this might be from the moon if they gain energy from the moon to transform, it could even be from another character and they take that character's hand in order to be able to transform. It could be from plants, flowers or different techniques. So there's many many ways a character could have a power source of their transformations. So consider this for your own series and consider where their powers for the transformations come from and what helps them to transform into their proper form in order to be able to fight. The fifth tip is in a novel think more of results over actions. Is there a sudden gust of winds, a sudden blinding light, a flash or a bang? So in novels it's better to actually focus on the results over everything that is happening. So rather than giving a lengthy description of clothes appearing, it can be more concise to focus more on the result, rather than telling the reader exactly everything that is happening. Of course, you can still describe how the characters look when transforming, but in order to put your readers in the scene, try to also describe what is happening outside of the transformation sequence. And my sixth tip is focus on the feeling of the transformation. Is it exciting? Is it a painful transformation? Does your character feel determined? And then you can show these emotions through how they act and the things they say. Maybe after they transform they feel like they can do anything. Or maybe the transformation makes them feel a bit sick afterwards. And my seventh tip for creating a good transformation is consider does this transformation fit the overall theme of the story? So the transformation should tie into the main themes and genres of the story. So if you have a cute shoujo series then the transformation should also be very cute in shoujo. Whereas if you have a darker series, the transformation should also have some darker attributes. Instead of when adding your transformation, does this transformation suit the book and the genre that I'm trying to tell? And if it doesn't, how can I make this transformation appeal to the people who would be reading my book? So now we're on to the second part of this tutorial, which is about designing good abilities and powers. Having well written abilities and powers can make a supernatural story even more exciting, but it's important to have the right development behind those powers in order to make it realistic for the people reading it and experiencing. So don't give your characters powers just for the sake of them being flashy, cool or badass. That can overall make them into a more overpowered character and you really run the risk of turning them into a Mary Sue or Gary Stu character type. You really want to avoid making them overpowered. In these next tips, I'll talk to you about how you can accurately design good abilities that will keep your readers interested and entertained for longer. First of all, let's talk about how a character can gain abilities without something like magic or supernatural abilities. These are abilities that are gained through the character's own means. In many series, a power can be created from the character's own means and not be gained through something magical or supernatural. So here is how to do this in your own story. My first tip is that the powers should be gained through training. For a character who didn't gain their abilities through supernatural means, that means they would have trained it in order to actually gain these abilities. Did they train themselves or did they have a mentor character? If you want to know more about writing mentor character types, I have this video right here of writing this character type among other character types that you will need in your manga, comic or light novel. Usually when training as well, the character will have a certain goal in mind and a reason to fulfill that goal. As they train, they need to have that determination to get stronger to reach that goal. They might wish to train in order to protect themselves, to protect someone else or maybe just to find a purpose in their life. There are many reasons why your character might want to train and you should include that in your story. Why does your character want to be strong? My second tip is give them one main ability to focus on the most. Don't make them super advanced in every single physical ability there is. One thing that really bothers me is that when there is a character who doesn't have any supernatural abilities but they seem to be supernaturally perfect in every single thing they do. They are good at sword fighting, karate, archery, every single physical ability. They are super buff and muscular. They are just perfect at everything. No, it's too overpowered. It's too overdone. And if you create a character like this, they just are really unrealistic as a character. So overall, you want to make sure that your character has one main ability to focus on. You can, of course, train them in some other minor abilities, but overall, just having a single main ability will make them more understandable and realistic as characters. What I recommend is that you choose one main ability your character is good at. This might be sword fighting. Then if you want to give them other abilities, maybe this is something they train with over the story. Or maybe they already have one of these abilities, but they are not as good with them as they are with sword fighting or your other chosen ability. I recommend that at most, your character should have three main fighting skills. A character who is good at sword fighting may use archery as a sub-skill, just for an example. So when you're developing your character's abilities, 
Try giving them at least one main ability that you're going to focus on throughout your story and the ability that they will grow with and become the most experienced with, but also try and give them maybe two sub skills that they can grow and train over the course of the story that will not be as advanced as their main skill, but still be something prominent in their character, abilities and powers. My third tip is give them at least one main weakness. One of the most important rules in developing character abilities is you need to make sure that they actually have more weaknesses than powers. Because it's actually the weaknesses that a character has that makes them more entertaining when they are using their abilities. We focus more on the weaknesses than what they can do. When you're creating your character's abilities, you need to think more on the topic of what can't your character do rather than what they can do. One of my favorite animes is Dororo, and Hyakimaru as a character definitely has way more weaknesses than strengths. At the beginning of the show, he literally has no skin, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, no hands, no legs, and he walks around on prosthetic limbs and has swords at the stubs of his arms. And he's such a badass character because of the fact that he has to work so hard to get past the weaknesses he has, and this is what makes him such a strong character. So when you're focusing on your own characters, it's really important that you focus more on the weaknesses over their strengths because those weaknesses are what will really develop and shape them into a more interesting and compelling character. So for your own character's abilities to be realistic, make sure you give them at least one main weakness. Some examples of this are they could be afraid of their own powers, they might be working with a short time limit to get strong, they could be afraid of the world, or they could have another side of them that craves power that they try and suppress. So I recommend you consider their main weakness and make sure that you apply that to their overall ability. My fourth tip is give them a good reason to need to use these powers and develop them further. That's why I recommend you give this character a goal to work towards, because as they're working towards their goal, it gives them a realistic reason to want to become stronger and develop their abilities further. It's quite likely that the abilities they have would help them in succeeding in this goal they are really striving towards. My fifth tip is give them realistic growth over the story. Your character should be very different from how they are at the beginning to how they are at the end. You really need to show their character growth and how they develop as a character over the course of the story you are telling. Your character at the beginning might be unskilled, but over time as they work to train themselves, they could they should become stronger over time and develop new abilities that can help them on their journey. Your character should grow through the story and your readers should be able to see that firsthand. My sixth tip is consider the need for their abilities in relation to the world building. For example, in Dororo, Yakimaru uses his powers to defeat the demons who stole the parts of his body and get them back. But because he defeats the demons, it also protects other people from being attacked by them. It ties into the world building of the overall story of Dororo. Also, the fact that there are demons in the first place also ties into the story because it's something that is more existent in the universe and it's something that is more normalized in the universe of that story. So for your own character abilities, see if you can tie their training and their skills into a bigger purpose in the world building and that will make their abilities all the more realistic and more entertaining. There could be training squads who work together to gain abilities. There could be monsters in the world that your character needs to defeat. Maybe the reason your character wants these abilities in the first place is to stop someone bad who affects the main world of the story. So next, in the second part of this video, let's talk about how you can create and develop good abilities and powers based off magic or supernatural situations. This is how most powers and abilities are developed in usual anime and manga. My first tip is give your powers or abilities a main theme. As I mentioned before in the transformations part of this video, a transformation should have a main theme. Adding a supernatural power or ability to your story is no exception. They should also have a main theme to go around, and that will also make it a lot more concise and clearer to understand in your story. If you didn't see that part of the video, I recommend going back to that timestamp here and checking out those transformation themes because I gave some examples of some themes that you may want to focus on in your own story. For example, if your character has a transformation based off animal powers, then that powers would likely carry over to the powers that they use when they are fully transformed. So I recommend that when you are doing this, you give them a main theme to base the powers around and that will make it all the more interesting when they are using those powers based off that particular theme. My second tip is keep things simple. Simple powers can be used in more ways. You actually limit yourself by giving your character too many abilities. If any problem can be solved for your characters using their abilities, then it means that they are far too overpowered. You want to think smaller when you are developing your character's abilities and think really simple but simple things that can be used in multiple ways. 
ways. The unique ways one power can be used will be more entertaining to your readers to see how that power can be used. For example, your character may have the ability to make other people smile on commands. And then that would also be a way they could make the people around them happier, but it would also be a way that they could distract the enemies. So as you can see, simple abilities can be used in multiple ways. So when you're developing your own character's abilities, try and think simple rather than something flashy or overpowered. My third tip is give them realistic growth in their powers over the story. Give them interesting growth stages that they will have to go through over the story. When developing supernatural abilities, there will usually be certain upgrades that will occur over the course of the story. This avoids them being super powerful at the start and allows them to grow and change as your readers are seeing this character. I recommend you choose at least three growth or upgrade stages in a smaller story and six upgrade stages in a longer story. You can actually see this well with Naruto's forms in this drawing from the manga of Naruto. Each time he changes in the story, he gains new abilities. There are about six main stages of his growth throughout the story. For your character growth, I recommend you choose different stages of development to focus on. This allows them to naturally grow over the story into these different stages of development with their powers and abilities. And with each time they grow into this different upgrade or stage of their powers, their powers should grow too. But keep in mind their powers should stay the same as their initial powers. So for example, a character with water powers shouldn't be able to suddenly gain fire powers the more they advance. But it can be much more natural for them to be able to build on those abilities they already have and turn their smaller water powers into a big tsunami. My fourth tip is decide where the powers or abilities came from in the first place. There should be an origin behind powers or abilities. It could be something that was given to them by a supernatural character, or it could be something that they were just born with. They could even be trained or developed over time. There are many origins for power and ability, and these origins usually tie into the main world building of the story. And that brings me to my next point. My fifth tip is decide how the powers and abilities fit into the world building. If your character is born with supernatural abilities, then it would be natural for your readers to assume that other characters in your world must have the chance to be born with those supernatural abilities too. If your character is the only character in the entire world of your story with those abilities, then it will seem a bit unnatural, it will leave your readers with a lot of questions. So a character's powers and abilities should tie into what else happens in the world. Is there a secret group of people with secret powers and your character is one of them? Or are special abilities something a lot more commonplace in the world? If you want to know more about this, I recommend you check out my older video on developing magic systems, where I talk more about incorporating the magic system into world building there. If you want to check out that video, you can watch it right here in the card. The sixth tip is limit the amount of powers your character could have. I recommend you break the powers into categories. If powers are based off a theme, there should only be a certain amount of abilities there can possibly be. Even if much of the world has supernatural abilities, there should be categories for each of those abilities. My seventh tip is give your character a realistic weakness. Weaknesses ensure that your character is not too overpowered. There could be a time limit on how long they can stay transformed, or if they use their powers too much they could get sick or weakened. They may need to charge their powers, or need a certain object in order to use their powers in the first place. There are many weaknesses a power could have, but I recommend you consider potential weaknesses in your own character's abilities as you continue to develop your character's powers, abilities, and supernatural skills. My eighth tip is consider cause and effect. With everything, there is always cause and effect. So how do your character's powers and abilities affect the world around them? A power that is too destructive can destroy the world around them, or a character who has repairing abilities can fix things around them that may be broken. With everything, there should always be a cause and effect, and your character's powers should not only affect other characters, but also the world around them. It should change situations and events, and change things in the world for better or worse. My ninth tip is, ensure the outward appearance of the ability ties in with the internal mechanics of that ability or power. The purpose of the power should be just as, if not more important, than the outward appearance of how the power looks. You could have a really flashy power, but without the mechanics and the purpose behind it, it's going to lose its purpose and it won't be as important and entertaining in your story. Ensure that you find a good balance between creating a power that is realistic, but also a power that fits the mechanics of the story. Ensure you find a balance between creating a good looking power, but also a power that fits the mechanics and purpose of the story. Now one final thing I want to mention on this topic is that supernatural powers can actually be blended in with physical abilities. For example, in Demon Slayer, Tanjiro's main abilities are used through a physical sword, but there is supernatural abilities involved too. In order to do this, look at the previous tips for both aspects and apply them both. Also, consider this. 
The weapon or the character is the vessel, but where do the powers come from? When merging the supernatural and physical in character abilities, the origins of the powers are especially important. Also ensure that you add different stages of fighting styles and character growth so they always have something to work towards. I recommend that if you're merging a physical weapon with supernatural abilities, you look over both of the tips I mentioned before and try finding ways to merge them both because merging those tips is the way that you create a character who uses a physical weapon but has supernatural abilities that they use alongside it. Finally, I want to talk about how you can add these abilities in your story to make it more interesting and compelling. You can give your characters these really well thought out and cool looking abilities, but without being able to properly weave them into your story and add them effectively, those abilities can sometimes fall flat. So how do you weave them effectively in your story and make sure your readers get the best experience of reading and being able to understand those characters' powers? That is what I will be talking about next. I also recommend you watch my How to Develop a Shonen Power System video because I talk about how to weave different power systems in with the main story and you can check out that video right here. Anyway, here are a few tips on how to effectively weave a character's powers into the main story. My first tip for doing this is consider scenes that can occur due to your character's abilities. There could be moments where they need to get new weapons or they need to train. A character's abilities can cause some interesting situations and that can add a lot to a plot in a story. My second tip is consider conflicts and positive moments that could arise for your character's powers. There are moments where things can go wrong too. However, these can also lead to moments where your characters do work things out. Your character's powers should be the forefront for these kinds of moments. My third tip is consider how they can use their abilities to problem solve. They shouldn't be able to solve everything, but they should be able to contribute and make things easier based on their particular powers. My fourth tip is ensure that your character's powers don't overshadow someone else's abilities in your story. That's why I highly suggest you give your character more simple abilities, because if a whole group of characters in your story has more simple abilities, then through working together they can actually do a lot more as a team. You need to make sure that your character is not too overpowered so that when they do succeed it is more exciting. If your character's powers can instantly solve any difficult situation, then that can get boring over time. And my fifth tip is consider the negative and positive ways a power could be used. Each power is really dependent on the person wielding power, so you have to consider the fact that with many powers, they can be used for evil as well as good. Consider these possibilities with your own characters and make them more well-rounded. Take a simple power and consider what ways that simple power could be used, for good or for evil. So that is how you create good transformations, good abilities, and good powers for your own manga, comic, or light novel projects. A lot more goes into it than what first meets the eye. Sometimes powers are a lot more in mechanics than what they do look like in an outward appearance. I hope that this video helped you in creating your own powers, abilities, and transformations for your own story. If it did, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what kind of powers you're creating in your own story because I'd love to hear about it. Feel free to chat with me on any of my social media at Midnight's Cross because I always enjoy hearing from you. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.